If you buy a Raspberry Pi, what do you do? You go to the website, download the imager, pick your pie, and you're good. But what if you have a board from Orange Pi, Banana Pi, Rasta, or one of the dozens of other single board manufacturers? You go to their website, dig around, and maybe find an image on GitHub or Google Drive. And what do you get? An image that technically boots? Ish. With Raspberry Pi, you get Raspberry Pi OS, and you're off to the races. Yeah, there's a reason this chart looks like this chart. Raspberry Pi is a software and hardware company, while everyone else pretty much sticks to hardware. But what if you want a full-featured Linux distro for your not Raspberry Pi? That's where Arbion, and now Arbion Imager, comes in. A handy tool for downloading and flashing Arbion OS to your single board computer. And we're taking the Pepsi challenge with this, Rock 5 ITX Plus. You can tell it's an ITX Plus by, mm, well, looking at the box it came in. It says so right there, ITX. And this is the one I use in the studio for capturing video. That's an HDMI capture card right there. Plus, with all the I.O., it doubles as my arm test bench. Really neat board. Oh man, this is going to be fun. Let's get to it. Our adventure begins on the Imager GitHub page, and this can be confusing for new users. You want to head to the release section located here. AMD and Intel Penguins, click here, and you Army Penguins, right here. There's a download for Mac OS and Windows as well, but you're on your own for that install. I'm going to click on the AMD64 app image and save it to my download folder, and we're off to the file manager. Now, I am clicking this as hard as I possibly can, and nada, nothing. We have to execute it. On GNOME, you can right-click properties and tap the execute button, or crack open a terminal and let your old friend chmod do the deed. Now we can click with gusto and squit. Oh yeah, users of Discord light mode will feel right at home. Both of them. Okay, time to choose a brand and Rasta's right at the top. Nice. Moving on to boards, there's a gang to choose from sorted by platinum, standard, and community. That doesn't reflect compatibility, just the level of support. Now let's search for IT and there's our ITX. Now time to pick an OS. There's options to sort by recommended, stable, nightly, apps, and minimal. We'll go with recommended, and that means an Ubuntu base with GNOME using the vendor kernel. Up next is storage. I'm using a vintage 16 gigabyte SD card that begs for the sweet release of death, but today is not that day. Time to select a drive, click erase and flash, wait for the image to download and decompress, and tap in some password digits so it can write the image to the drive. It'll take a few minutes to write the image, so maybe tap that like button while we're waiting. It really helps people find my little corner of TechTube. And oh, look at that. We've moved on to verification and bam. Now we have an Armbian fueled SD card ready for the ITX Plus. So it's time to pop it in and cross our pinky toes. Oh, look at it go. This is your standard Armbian setup. We need to set a root password, select a shell, create a user, and pick a language. Then after a bit of anticipation, there's a desktop, and I can tell by that pulse, it's hardware accelerated. Neat. Now, I want to install the system to an NVMe drive, so let's go ahead and power down, because I need to apply a liberal dose of NVMe and NVMe accessories, then power on the system with the SD card in place. Back on the desktop, we're going to open the terminal and run the Armbian installer with pseudo powers. I'm going to select boot from EMMC with the system on NVMe. Proceed, agree to wipe the data bits, select NVMe drive, and warning! It's really going to wipe the data. Now I can pick the file systems for the drives and away we go. The installer says it will take around 21 minutes to finish, so you got about 4, possibly 5 minutes to grab a drink. It's finalizing sync, and look at that. We're done, but instead of rebooting, we need to power down the system, so we're not in a race to yoink the SD card free from the jaws of Mr. ITX Plus face. Time for the moment of truthiness. Wow, that didn't take long at all. But we still need to check for updates and install any newness. Ooh, yeah, no. And I'm installing the kitchen sink firmware just for good measure. That's wrapped up, so one more reboot to get things sorted. And here we are. Time for old Doc Vin to give this board a physical. 
Starting with Wi-Fi, I don't have the antennas plugged in, so it's doing really good to see the 5 gig in the studio and no problem connecting. Ether noodles are connected at 2.5 and 1 gig, but you can mix and match. Bluetooth sees my trusty Xbox wireless controller, and I'm plugged into a 1080p monitor, but there's plenty of resolutions to choose from. Sound is coming out of all the places, HDMI, DisplayPort, and 3.5mm jack. That doubles as an audio input. Right on. The pack and apps are a selection of our right. Videos, GIMPs, HTAPs, an office suite to uninstall, the best video player, something for images, and an application to download Linux ISOs. Nice. You sneaky fox, I see you. And that reminds me to check Chromium for hardware acceleration. Look at that. So important and also burning a hole in my eye orbs. Even the terminal is pain. Let's tap the note button and much better. And I might have got lost playing desktop dress up for a moment, but it's for the best. Right. Back to goth mode Chromium and over to the tubes. People put a lot of work into getting hardware acceleration up and running, so it winds me up when someone shows an SBC struggling to play a 1080p YouTube video. Now, this is HTOP, and it's showing the load on the CPU cores, and things are pretty chill, and it's more the same when you tap the Inbigin button, even at 1080p. And you want to do 4K? Not a problem, since it's using the dedicated video bits and the Rockchip 3588. Release the GIMP for a moment and see how it handles the thumbnail for this video. Now, I don't know if I would be doing any heavy lifting with the system, but yeah, this, this is pretty much workable for small projects. And despite the ITX Plus being an ARM PC, most things are in working order, including hardware accelerated rendering with Vulkan. Look at that horse. It's amazing. And I want to pop over to Vulkan and check out the Tuxcart benchmark at 1080p. And that has to be tapping, what, 30? 35? Wait a minute. Now I have to try Silksong. This has the added difficulty multiplier of emulating an x86 CPU, and it's still hovering around 40 FPS. Box 64 gets faster every time I try it. It's wild stuff. But there it is. Armbian 25, GNOME 46, and a Mali GPU running like a champ on the Rock 5 ITX+. Plus all courtesy of Armbian Imager. I am really impressed how well the ITX works and even more so with the Armbian Imager. What a fantastic tool for getting people started with a not Raspberry Pi. But we need to talk order of operation. If you're thinking about buying a not Raspberry Pi, check the Armbian website and see if it's supported. And if it's not, don't buy it. If you already own a board running a half-functional OS from the vendor, download Armbian Imager and give it a shot. And be sure to check out the full guide on the Interfacing Linux web zone, links to everything in the video description, and while you're down there, maybe give this one a like so more people can find it. And if you want to support my work and get early access to videos like this one, check out the Patreon. Every little bit helps. But that's going to do it for this one, so I want you to get out there and make something awesome.